Hi, morning everyone. Uh, sorry I'm a few minutes late. I've had um, some guys in to fix the roof and um, even though I told them I was doing a live at 10, they were trying to call up to me. So I had my mom-in-law shouting, Caroline, Caroline. So I had to tell her, I'm on a work call and text the guys. So anyway, um, now we're back into work mode, sort of. Uh, so happy Wednesday. Um, apparently today on the awareness calendar, hold on, I've written it down on, check out my board and my, I don't know if you can see it properly, but I'm trying to finish up a mural for my logo. Very interesting, a little mini tour. So today, I haven't written out my calendar. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's bloggers day today. Hold on. Yes, so today on, like, on Awareness Days, apparently it's Bloggers Day. Uh, and I think there's some other holidays, but that's the one that was interesting to me. So um, if you don't know about Awareness Days, oh, it's also Work Like a Dog Day. So basically, slog it out today. Uh, if you don't know what Awareness Days are, there is a subscription that you can uh, kind of be a part of called awarenessdays.com. I think it's something like 30 or 40 pounds a year and you basically get a calendar of all the national and international days of the year so um if i can think of any uh there's may the 4th is may the 4th be with you day you know star wars day um and you've got all of these like random days some of them are generated by charities trying to increase interest in their brand so one day throughout the year you might have something like a purple day um and then I think you had to wear purple at work or whatever. And if I remember correctly, then then all proceeds go to uh, a, a cause of supporting epilep epilepsy. Should have chosen something I could say properly. <laughs> uh, so there's all of these awareness days. So if you're ever struggling for content, for um, ideas on what to post about on social media, um, you can go through all these awareness days and there's other places. So I'm out of breath from running up the stairs. <laughs> <sighs> there's other places online that you can find a whole um, bunch of these days uh, just to, to kind of create ideas on how to post um, on social media uh, and be relevant to um, what a lot of people are posting about on the same day. The idea is, I think, I mean, I'm not a social media expert, but the idea is that you then um, can be found if somebody searches the hashtag for that relevant day something so um let's see what other examples i can think of uh let's see so tomorrow for example no i'm lying friday for example is purple heart day oh and tomorrow i need to make sure izzy knows this is international sailor moon day she's a bit of a fan um and you can find these dates on nationaltoday.com see I'm, i've written it down because i'm very good <laughs> daysoftheyear.com, um, I'll, I'll put it in my blog tomorrow, nationaldaycalendar.com, and then there's a few, um, I can't read my writing, but I think it's win calendar, like w-i-n calendar.com, and officeholidays.com. So these are all free places. So what awarenessdays.com does is it basically pulls out all of these sources from um wherever their resources are from and they also get charities feeding information into them and they just have a calendar that they send out to you for the year which has all of the dates already put down on the calendar or you can do what i've done if you don't want to pay 30 or 40 pounds a year and just go to these different sources and and just fill your calendar and then the idea is basically to look ahead and start kind of um planning content around there. Anyway, I've gone, as usual, I've gone on a little ramble that, that has nothing to do with today's content. So, apologies to have been out of commission last week. Um, I wasn't well, but I wasn't COVID, so that's good. I, I just felt odd. I, I had like a little bit of a tight chest and I was super tired. I spent most of every day sleeping, <laughs> which is nice when, you, when you're not enjoying work. But I was actually enjoying what I was doing and then I had to take the whole week off basically. Uh, so I, I said now for the test, it was all very exciting. I nearly vomited because you have to stick it right in the back of your throat. And then when I pulled the little swab out, I was like, <laughs> but it was all good. And I sent it on and I'm COVID free. So that's all very exciting. 
but that means this week I'm like raring to go. I've already had to take yesterday off work because um, I felt really bad for Izzy. I mean, all she's done since breaking up from school is sit at home. And so I think this week is like week three or week four, I can't remember, of being off from school. And I just thought she needs to see other people <laughs> other than just her iPad. Um, so so I, um, I basically pulled her around with me. We met up with some friends. Um, so my friend from primary school, Michelle, so thanks for that. And and then later on, we had a visitor back from the Overton days, Amelia, and we met up with her. And it was ridiculous how shy Izzy was around Amelia. It was, it was kind of cute, but she was proper angsty. And wearing all black just made her look like a, a shy goth girl. It was very cute. And she started warming up at the end when we said goodbye. So hopefully if we see Amelia again tonight, Izzy would have warmed up enough to be her normal chatty self, so we'll see. So to remind you all, the last time we were speaking, and to remind me, I check my notes, uh, we were basically going through th the things to prepare for a brand audit. Um, and why these things are important, as I mentioned before, I'm just going to give you a bit of a refresher. Um, hello to anyone who's watching, by the way. Uh, is you basically... Sometimes you just need to stop and take stock of how you've changed and grown. Um, I was actually chatting to uh, Amelia's friend last night and I was saying to him, uh, I think he was talking about um, doing it, updating his CV recently or something like that. And, and I was saying to him that um, it's, it's just a good exercise. Even if you're not looking for work, it's a great exercise to just sit down and recognize the skills that you've um, accumulated throughout the years because you're so busy in the actual work that you don't often notice how many skills that you've absorbed and, and adopted and, and you've learned and you've changed and you've grown and you've adapted throughout the years and it just forms part of your daily routine but sometimes it's really good to just stop and take a look at it and see actually does my brand still reflect reflect um, how I offer my services accurately. Like, does, Is my brand accurate to um, the expectations the customers have of me and then what I deliver? Like, are the expectations low because I've learned so much, in which case you need to catch up to that because um, your brand is, is part of people's perception of you. It also forms um, the beginning of your reputation and it's also kind of like a brand promise by looking at not just your logo, but your online presence, um, your website, your logo is a part of that, the colors you choose, the fonts you choose, you're giving your potential customers an impression of the kind of quality of service they can expect. Um, the level of service, if you're going to be friendly, professional, serious, whatever, the, you know, the tone of, of your emotional connection that you're going to have with them. And if that brand promise is broken because you don't meet or exceed those expectations, then that's going to be a problem. It also is very good for um, helping you to price your services correctly because it gives you the confidence when you feel like, you know, when I, I, I do say it still because I've got, you know, low self-esteem, but um, I'm getting there. But my website, I used to be really embarrassed by. And so I said, oh, so sorry, you know, I'm, my website, I'm still, I'm still doing up my website. Um, so just bear in mind, not all my work is there. So basically, I'm lowering people's expectations of what they're going to go and see. But you should be proud of your website. You should be proud and, and you should know that when people are going to your website, they're getting a true reflection of the type of work you do, um, the type of person or the type of uh, interaction they're going to have with you as a business and as a person by the friendliness, um, the tone of voice and all of the things like your colors and logos, etc. They all help to create this impression. And if you've grown past what your branding was maybe five years ago, you need to catch that up because it actually gives you the confidence. And when your website is looking really awesome and is doing a lot of the work for you, then you know that you're worth more and you can start charging more. So branding is very, very important, not just for representing your business in a certain way, but it's also as a business owner, super important for giving you confidence in yourself and your abilities. 
has i mean i think i think a lot of us women have this problem where i think there was some statistic kind of recently like a few years back that a man will will go for a job if he's between like 40 and 60 percent sure that he can do the work you know like you know when you go down the tick box um and and you kind of go through and, and and maybe think well i don't have the skill but i'm sure i'll learn it so so that's what they're talking about like 40 to 60 percent of the categories needed he'll still go for the job whereas a woman i think is between 90 and 100 percent so they they well i say they we feel like we need to fulfill every single um skill requirement in order to go for a job so i find that especially with women we we kind of need that added reassurance, that confidence. And this is what branding does. And it's it's comparable to when I, I mean, I, I know I'm in my home studio now, which is fine because I made it really lovely for me. Um, but when I moved into the city, into, into the studio that I was hiring in the city, just the fact of going out to the space that was professional and mine, it gave me this sense of accomplishment and sense of, like this is serious, this is a business, and you know, if I'm gonna be paying rent somewhere, I need to be earning that amount of money to pay rent. And it just gave me this lift. And that's what branding does. It kind of puts you in the mindset of like, you know, this is real. This is not just a side hobby or side project that if it gets too hard, I can always maybe give up later on. It it just helps you to define so much things. It makes it educates you into your own brand. It makes you aware of so many stuff that you didn't realize you needed to be aware of. So with all that waffling, because like I said, every single video, I'm trying to get this down to not be a six hour long flipping live. But anyway, so looking at my notes, the next step. So you would have gone through and defining where your brand is now, how it's growing, and throwing in some aspirational things in there. So we, we'll be going through things like your brand personality core values. So these are the most important things because this is what this is the stuff that creates long time, long term relationships. Um, your mission statements. This is going to help motivate you on the days where where things are, are slow and low. Your growth goals. Um, how you want your customers' experience to be. So how you want them, their journey to, to be from the moment that they first get to know who you are to uh, when they get the product or service delivered at the end. Um, your competitors, you know, research them to see that you're up to par, that you, you're comparable to your competitors. Take, take the good points that they have and adopt them to your own business. And then also identifying the differences so that you can um, identify your USP, which is a unique selling point. Hmm. A little bit of business lingo there for you. Uh, so this, these items that you define, they're going to be working towards creating the soul of your brand. So the the person behind the brand, and that's like I said before, this is the way that I like to work. It's not necessarily industry wide, um, but I, I strongly believe that there's a yearning for emotional interaction again that humanity we've kind of lost a little bit of our caring for each other because of you know the computer screen and what i love about the the terrible situation of covid is the fact that people have figured out different ways to connect like zoom is a, like a huge thing now and that's wonderful because even though it was always around there was no real desire for people to learn how to use these things. And now the whole world has adopted this new way and seen how easy it is to connect, even if you're not in the same community or the same county even. Sorry, I think my, the light is making me want to sneeze. So I'm just going to put myself in darkness here for a bit because that's whew, killing me. It's also really hot. I feel like I'm melting. Uh, all right, back on track. So after you've done all these things you've defined how you've grown you've defined or recognized that maybe your brand needs to be updated or completely scrapped and start again which is always the hardest solution to kind of go for but there's also ways that you can do it which is really beneficial to your business um, now what you want to do 
is you want to see the size of the project that you have with, um, with getting your brand up to scratch to match your skills. So I keep getting myself distracted. There was like something on my computer, which is why I was... <laughs> see, I'm like that dog in Up with a like, squirrel. So just bear with me because there, there is some, some gold nuggets in, in my ramblings. All right, so what you want to do now is you want to get, if possible, because I know a lot of stuff is digital, um, it would even help if you just print out a lot of these things. So if you have Canva templates, print them out. Um, if you have any kind of literature, so your business card, if you have a, a letterhead, I mean, I know it's a bit old school, but some, some people still need letterheads, most likely invoices. So any designed pieces of collateral that you send out as part of your branding, your visual communication, gather this all together, get a nice clear table and put it all across and have a look. Does it look, they don't have to all be designed exactly the same. You are allowed to have variations. And, and in fact, that's, preferable to have variations of your branding so that it fits in um, logically and comfortably but does it look like it's all part of the same brand is your logo the same on every single piece of collateral and this includes your social media platforms um, so if you're using a logo on your Facebook business page for example is it the same logo or is it a logo that you used to use four years ago and, and you just couldn't be bothered to change it does your Facebook business page even have your logo on? If it's not in the profile picture, then it really should be on your timeline. I mean, that's a really good position for um, for putting your logo and even maybe a strap line or just or just an interesting picture that, that um, that's seasonal. Uh, so in summer, you could have some sort of like a summer themed picture in the background, your logo in the front. And the idea behind this exercise is does it accurately and consistently represent your brand now <clears throat> i know this is part of an exercise where you're looking do i need to update my brand um is my brand working for me so you might find that it accurately represents your current brand that you're looking to evolve that is that's good if it does but what i find a lot of the time is we kind of go off script and and we sometimes um will stretch our logo or or not care as much perhaps that the the color variations are different um, I'm just trying to think of, of silly examples that are avoidable uh, the idea behind measuring sorry <laughs> my swinging me around the idea behind measuring the consistency of your brand is to have a look and see you know what is my practice do I actually consistently show my brand in the same way on every single platform if I don't this is a habit I need to start adopting into my business like ASAP <clears throat> and um, and there's ways to do that so so when I design a logo for a client I design it from a point of view that this will be one small part of a brand so for example if I'm doing a brand evolution one of the the discussions is is the color palette you're currently using accurately portraying your brand so there's a there's a lot of theory behind color theory uh, uh, and it's so interesting i mean i really love it a, a lot of color theory is um is western so bear that in mind if you if you're looking at at, at working globally you need to be aware of the negative connotations in certain cultures to do with colors um, <clears throat> so on a, on the whole a lot of the colors represent the same things but sometimes in certain cultures like i believe in china their color of mourning is white whereas in the western culture our color of mourning is black it's just just being aware of these things will mean that um, you can then test or measure if your color palette is clashing against cultures that you're trying to advertise to or market to um, right so for example if you are a business that is strongly linked to ethical environmental ways of working so an example would be tropic so they're um if you don't know they're a cosmetic company that create 
skincare products and they are very very serious about um you know no waste about not uh, pillaging the earth of of its nutrients example example for example god I, like every week i can't talk so just let's just pretend i'm talking super profesh now the um tropic their main color uh is green which is obvious i mean that represents nat nature <laughs> nature lush it also represents wealth and growth um, and it can represent greed because it's linked with money. So depending on how you use it and in conjunction with your font and, and icons, it, um, it can lean towards green, greed. <laughs> um, and also the, the variations of the green, so the darker the green, the more like a primary green, that's gonna have a lot more blue in it than a lime green, for example. So the darker green will start to take on some of the, the impressions that a blue will make because it's got some blue in it. So then that's gonna be more along the lines of professional, trustworthy, um, maybe serious. Then the lime green, because it adopts some of the, the yellow uh, personality traits, it's gonna be more vibrant and young and um, full of energy. And also like the almost neon lime green and the and the bright oranges, they represent technical or technology advancement. So you'll notice, especially with uh, razor blades, they use a lot of lime greens and oranges because what they're representing is um, the fact that they are always looking to ad advance their products through technology. Um, so you'll start to notice these things now. Uh, so what was I rabbiting on about? Yes. So <laughs> when you're doing your audit, you need to check like, actually maybe my color palette is completely wrong for what I'm trying to say. And what it's doing is instead of enhancing my message, it's actually clashing against it and creating a lot more questions instead of curiosity. Now, when you go against the industry standard for color, so let's say, for example, you're in the beauty trade, a lot of um, beauticians use purples and like teals or turquoisey blueies and um, you can break away from the industry standard for that color but then what you're doing is you're creating a question from your potential customer that is why are they different um, so they might not this is it's probably all going on subliminally but um, Imagine that you are on a shelf with a whole bunch of other beauty therapists and yours is the only color and look and feel that's completely different from the others. It's going to be jarring, but what it does is if you're doing it for a really good, really enticing reason, it'll then work in your favor to create curiosity. I hope this makes sense. Um, so when you are looking at all of your marketing collateral on a table, you need to take in your color theme. Is it consistently used uh, across the board? Do you actually have a color palette or do you just use a color that you're feeling that day? Um, if you don't have a color palette, get one. It's really important because everything that is chosen needs to work as a team in getting your message across. So. Um, the icon in your logo if you have one, the typography that you choose for your logo and for the rest of the messaging, you need to have um, a choice. And your color palette, you start off with one main color and then you get some supporting characters. You get, um, so your, your, your main color palette and depending on the complexity of the logo, you could have two and then you can have a, a second color palette uh, to either to categorize parts within your business or to enhance the first, the primary color palette. Uh, also, if you have some sort of a, a tagline, is that used consistently throughout everything? Do you have it word for word wherever it appears? Is it exactly the same and in the exactly the same font? So make that part of your logo. So all of this stuff you kind of go through and you start realizing where your consistency is lacking and you start building that into your growth plan for 
even if you don't want to um, evolve your brand, even if you're happy with it, this is very, very important. You need to check that your brand is being shown consistently. Now, the importance of this, because I mean, I could go on for days, and in fact, I need to probably break this into smaller lives. Um, it needs to all work together to consistently represent a certain message. Uh, for example, mine, I'm hoping, is working to create a a feminine product i want to appeal to other women other small business owners that's my target audience i want i want to work with small business owners that are are female because i because I, I kind of i'm a part of my own audience and i know that i can help them to be successful and work with them and that it's just so easy working with other women in a good way I, you know i love that feeling of enabling others to reach their success and to fulfill their dreams um, so this is why I use a palette of pinks and throw a few little blues in there, um, which, by the way, I've evolved to use because I've, I've changed my, my brand recently. I need to make sure as well that uh, my logo, my, my pictogram, my icon um, all works to help towards that. So I'm hoping that the impression or the brand promise that I give is one of quirky and fun, but also professional. Uh, I also... I strive to exceed expectations, but um, I'm hoping that I give off a level of professionalism um, with how tight my font that I've chosen is. And so what I need to do is, is put it all out and see, am I using my brand consistently across everything? Because uh, it all supports itself with giving one message, which is trust me i'm going to do a good job for you and we're going to have fun along the way so that's that's the impression that i want to start off giving and then when people come to me directly um i want that impression to carry on so so they're expecting a certain type of person when they see my branding and then when they come to me uh, and think of this on a bigger level if you if you have staff this is why training your staff is important because you've got an impression of a brand and every single person involved with face-to-face -face customer connectivity has got to represent that brand accurately because this is how you grow your customer base because it's, it's based on trust. And this is really important because trust will bring with it longevity so that you want to have customers that will only use you that if they have anything that's even slightly linked to you, they'll come to you straight away and say, do you do this thing? And then you can either say yes or no, or I don't, but I know I've got to trust a team around me that can do it and I can manage this job for you. Um, and you can't do that when your work is inconsistent. Now, an example I have of this, which I'm not sure if it's still accurate because I, I did this exercise a few years ago there is um you might know in norwich city as you go into the city when you're traveling along um i don't know if you know you're going towards st stephen street towards um the roundabout where where iceland is on and when you're going down newmarket street and ipswich street and it kind of joins into one street anyway along that road on the left, there is a business called Goulash House. Now, um, my husband and I and a friend of ours, Ian, we went there, oh, and, and our daughter, Izzy, we went there a while back and had the most delicious dinner. It was really, really lovely. But <laughs> the colours that they used, first of all, was like a dark, almost like a dark red, like a burgundy maroon type colour which I think teamed, because I know that's like a, a popular restaurant color, but teamed with the word goulash, knowing that goulash is normally beef, it just made me think of blood. So that was, I mean, maybe this is my brain, but that's, I was like, mm, I don't know. Um, the font that they chose was kind of like a 60s style font for the front of the, the restaurant. The font for goulash house in the menu was different so they had no logo really. They had this graphic that was like a little house, almost reminded me of old um, NatWest for some reason. Um, and then that house I think appeared on one of the social media sites and on nothing else. 
so it wasn't really part of the branding the colors were different on each platform uh, and what it and the font was different and in fact i think on one of them they used their old name so so it used to be called something else before goulash house and I think on one of the platforms, they hadn't updated it yet, if I remember correctly. Their A board looked completely different again. So even within the space of the restaurant, so this is a physical space where you know where you are and you know what you're going to eat. It was still confusing because it was like it was three different brandings before you even go into the door. And then the menu was different. So this is how it re relates into the digital world. Because after that experience, I was like, this place is amazing. They really need to get the word out more because the food was incredible. The decor was blah and the design was awful, but they don't deserve to be penalized for that because they've got a really good brand. Well, they said they did when we had dinner that night. Um, so I went to have a look at them on Facebook so I could follow and support them. And as you may imagine, Goulash House is, is kind of like a generic name. So there's probably going to be more out there. Um, the first thing I found didn't look anything like them, so I went out again and tried to search again. So now they've already lost me as, an, as a curious client because I've had to do so much work to go and find them that if I'm not passionate enough, I'm going to give up pretty quickly. All I want to know is that this Facebook page is connected to this restaurant. If they don't look the same, now I have to question and I have to do further research. I need to say research. Uh, and that's a lot of work for, for um, a client to do. You need to understand that your, your customer is a busy person. They don't want to pull off a full on investigation to find where you're at on social media and, on, and online. They want to find your website straight away. They want to find your social media pages that you have that they want to connect with you with straight away. They don't have the time to be second guessing everything. Um, also because what that does is it starts to erode your trust right at the beginning. And you can't, especially the small business, you can't afford your customers to be uncertain of the type of business that you are at the first hurdle. I mean, it's it's just so easy to fix. It's so simple. You just have one logo and you put it across everything. Um, if you are the main face behind the business like I am, then mix the two. So in my Facebook business page, I have my profile in the profile image and then Hopefully, I need to check myself, my logo should be within the timeline. Um, and the idea is also to cross link all of your things together. So if somebody finds my website first, there are social media links on there. If somebody finds my social media link pages first, my website link is on there. So that I'm always moving people across to wherever they want to be and how they want to interact with me. Um, and then I'm also actively a part of Facebook groups that have nothing to do with my business, but maybe where my customers congregate. So um, I'm going to wrap up because as usual, I've, I've gone on for yonks. Um, so to wrap up today's episode, which is basically me rabbiting on a lot about a whole bunch of different stuff. And I, and I am going to review all of these videos and get much clearer and actually break down a lot of points and take you along these exercises with me if you want to join me but today was about after your exercise after going through your audit and seeing perhaps where you've you've learned and grown and changed and gained more experience and does your brand reflect that the next step is to try and print out as much of the stuff as possible um, and just spread them out on a table and have a look that if there was no one from your business standing there to explain anything, would a complete novice customer who's never heard of you, would they be able to look over it and go, oh yes, this, this, must, this belongs to this person or this is just one business, you can see it because it's, it has a level of consistency to it. Um, if you have any specific questions, I would love you to send them to me. Um, it, it will also help me to just to create uh, a more concise video based on a topic. Um, so going forward, so this whole series is basically 
getting to grips with doing a brand audit um, and figuring out how you can move forward with the information that you've uncovered. Uh, so that I am still researching how to come up with a, um, what's it called? A client avatar. <laughs> <laughs> it was in my brain and then I just fell asleep for a second um, so I'm still researching on a, a good way to come up with a, a client avatar what I want to do is actually create like a like a worksheet like some sort of an exercise and actually have that on my digital downloads uh, so that you can fulfill the exercise really clearly and in a fun way so I've got like a few sources that I'm gathering uh, so I can pick out the bits that I think are relevant to my clients um, and create something that's really helpful. So that's coming up. Um, I'm also just checking my notes. I think a good progressive next step would be once you identify where you want your brand to move towards, um, then it's also about planning how you want your brand to grow how you want it to be perceived and how you want it to grow and and what your your growth goals are so it's going to be things like um how do you want your brand to grow do you want it to increase sales um do you want to grow your customer base do you want more customers um do you want to get to a point where it's necessary to hire staff and you know what does that look like um so this is all about brand growth and business growth. Do you, you want to collaborate with a partner, which is an amazing way to grow your audience as well, by the way. So I think these would be really good ones to tackle individually and tie it back to, um, to how branding and help to support these growth goals. Um, and one of them is, do you want to create brand awareness? Now, this is an important one because it's, it's part of growing your business, but it's also a part of generating and understanding your own brand and um, and how to go about getting brand recognition. So it works towards creating trust and a reputation for your business. Uh, where's my little, there's also something that I always say, hold on, oh here we go. Um, yeah, uh, so building your brand reputation and this is where consistency comes in. Uh, repetition, which is, is consistency um, plus it, it you know when you repeat it it starts to grow your recognition and in turn that will grow your reputation so this is how you grow the trust uh, and also perhaps part of your growth goal is to establish yourself as an industry expert and how can you do that so so one example would be to um, as I'm doing to do these lives and um, what I would like to follow it up with blogs, you don't have to, you can just stick to lives if you want, but I, I think that's a good way to to kind of share with people that maybe don't have the opportunity to listen to a, to a Facebook Live, maybe they're, they're in an office and then, or they don't have the opportunity to put headphones on, whatever. Um, so, so I like to give people options. So, thank you if you join me today. Thank you if you're watching it on repeat. Um, so the next steps I want to do is to start looking at setting yourself uh, growth goals and how your brand can support you with this next step. Uh, next week, I might even wash my hair because I've got all of this going on today. Um, I might have a, a clearer skin because you know, I've been in bed for a week. It's been pretty disgusting. <laughs> and, and also I like to celebrate... Um, this t-shirt, a blam. I don't know if it's backwards, but basically it says, not today, Satan, not today. Oh, no, it's not backwards. Yeah, not today, Satan, because today's going to be a good day. Uh, so thank you again. I'm going to wrap up now. I'm going to hopefully go downstairs, get some work done, watch a little bit of Murder, She Wrote while I do that. Uh, and I hope we all have a great day. Please email me with any questions that you have, uh, any worries. If you have a brand that you'd like me to to just do a quick overview of and tell you the impression that it's making i love doing stuff like that because that's like my geeky research mode uh then yeah drop me a line put a comment in this video uh and awesome sauce i'm gonna say goodbye now have a lovely day bye